Ladies and gentlemen, fight fans all around the world, you are watching what you need. I'm going to go into this hypocrisy in boxing. And I call it hypocrisy because clearly certain voices are silent at this point in time. Let's start off with this article from BoxingScene.com, the source for boxing online. I want you guys to always evaluate what certain camps and certain people say. And it's pretty obvious to most boxing fans. I think most of you know, whether you pick one side or another, that there is a degree of biasness going on. So I was looking at this article here that is dealing with the progress of Canelo in this Canelo versus Cotto fight on BoxingScene.com. Shout out again to BoxingScene.com, the source for boxing online. And in this article, it's talking about Canelo Alvarez's preparation for this fight, but a particular part in this particular piece really gets my attention from BoxingScene.com. The fight promises crowd-pleasing, high-intensity action between two powerful fighters competing in the primes of their careers. Both of whom are coming off impressive, dominating performances in their most recent fights. And they go on to speak very highly of both fighters. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't Miga Koto in the prime of his career back in 2006, 7, 8, and then he lost to Antonio Margarito, and then he was boosted up as being in the prime of his career because he got two consecutive wins, one against Joshua Clotty, which to me wasn't that great. He did knock down Clotty in the first round, I believe, but then even though he slammed down Clotty on the ground, I think Clotty came back, and I thought Clotty won that fight, but the fight before he knocked out his opponent... And wasn't he in the prime of his career, but after Manny Pacquiao beat him, people said he wasn't in the prime of his career. Even though he beat successively three fighters, stopping all of them, to face Floyd Mayweather, people said he was damaged goods facing Floyd Mayweather. Even though Freddie Roach admitted that Miga Cotto was damaged goods from the Antonio Margarita fight and preferred to fight him than Shane Mosley. Can Miga Cotto have two primes in his career? I mean, I'm just trying to make sense of this thing here. He said... Two powerful fighters competing in the primes of their careers. So I'm, I'm guessing Canelo Alvarez wasn't in the prime of his career when he faced Floyd Mayweather. Never mind he beat Austin Trout and dropped him. And he also beat the daylights out of Shane Mosley. I guess he wasn't in the prime of his career when he became unified WBC, WBA champion, right? See, that's the hypocrisy and the contradictions that you see over and over. And the sad thing about it is this is being done by journalists, by media. Yeah, they are hyping up this fight because Cotto, come on now, Cotto did very well. He knocked out Rodriguez, who I believe never been stopped before. And then he went on to knock out and stop Sergio Martinez. Yes, yeah, Sergio Martinez had a little knee problem, but I mean, he went on to, to stop him. Okay, he had to retire in the ninth round. Heroic Sergio Martinez, but he had to stop. And then he went on to knock out Daniel Gill, a former two-time world champion, right? At middleweight, a big middleweight at that. Knocked him out, right? Now, yeah, Daniel Gill was weight drained. We give it that. But he was still a guy went into fight and got beat. Right? The same guy that Gennady Golovkin knocked out in three. Mika Koto knocked out in four. Right? Impressive stuff. Kill Alvarez ran through James Kirkland. Right? Beat Eris Landy Lara. No matter how you look at it, he beat him. Got the decision on him. And knocked out Angulo. Right? This is coming off the Mayweather loss. Right? Koto coming off the Mayweather loss. He lost to Austin Trump. But then after that, he's only had a slew of wins. Right? Now, I'm hearing Miguel Cotto's in his prime here with Freddie Roach. And I'm hearing that Canelo Alvarez is in his prime. I'm surprised that Canelo Alvarez wasn't in his prime when he was facing Floyd Mayweather, just that Mayweather was that good that he beat him. And obviously, Miguel Cotto was in his prime, in my opinion, because he gave Mayweather the toughest fight of his career, one of the toughest fights of his career. So it wasn't that Miguel Cotto wasn't in his prime. But what would be funny to me is if Floyd was to come out of retirement, face either one of those guys and beat him again, I would like to know what the media would say. Okay, because if you just have a half a brain, you realize that once a boxer masters another boxer, I'm talking about a boxer, a guy, pure boxing, okay, a guy who can box, obviously the second time around, he's going to beat them even easier, all right, because he had to figure out Mika Koto's style. Once you figure out a style, the second time around is easier than the first, and it's, that's been proven time and time again when Floyd Mayweather has fought a fighter again. He's only done it twice, but the second time he fought Marcos Maidana, it was a wipeout. The second time he fought Jose Luis Castillo, it was a wipeout because he knew the style he was facing. It's just strange to me that people talk down opponents that face Floyd Mayweather as if something's wrong with them. It's almost like they get the excuses bug, you know what I mean? But somehow it doesn't apply to other fighters. The hypocrisy. I'll show you another case in point. Shout out to Fight Critic for this article. And Fight Critic, for the most part, is as unbiased as he possibly can be. We all have a bias somewhere in our speech. But Fight Critic comes and shows this. 
Mega Kodo declines Vada testing and ups for USADA for Canelo Alvarez fight. No outrage, huh? And he's right. Thomas Hauser should be all over this article because Thomas Hauser went to town on USADA with a lot of false information. And I did a video on this because it was pure gossip on Thomas Hauser's end. He lied about the times when the USADA officials came to visit Floyd, that they weren't present. He lied about the Bob Bennett, you know, claiming that this was something needing to investigate when Bob Bennett comes and says the opposite of that. He lied about Floyd's method of using an IV was prohibited by WADA, leaving out the information that there's a therapeutic use exemption. And therefore, what Floyd has done is perfectly above board, trying to suggest that he was sneaking behind and using PEDs. And this is not the first time Thomas Hauser has been throwing this out there. He's been throwing it out there repeatedly, and he's always been negative against Floyd Mayweather. Almost all his articles. And have raving reviews for Manny Pacquiao. He's never investigated Manny Pacquiao's surprising performance between 2008 to 2011, but particularly 2008 to 2009. He, this guy was moving up in weight and rocking guys. I don't care if the guys were weight drained or not. He was just mowing them down and taking their punches too. We're talking about guys two divisions bigger than you. Three divisions bigger than you. Because he came up from lightweight and this guy was basically a super featherweight at the time that grew into welterweight. And he wasn't a full welterweight when he fought Oscar De La Hoya. He wasn't a full welterweight when he fought Miga Cotto. And he definitely wasn't a super welterweight when he fought Antonio Margarito. And this guy was taking their punches. He was walking through their punches. I mean, he was getting punched in the face. In the body. And this guy was walking through that. Nobody talks about that. His punch output increased during that time. No one in the history of boxing does that. I'm just saying. Thomas Hauser didn't cover that, right? He covered Mayweather versus Pacquiao. Mayweather beats Pacquiao. Kevin Ioli covers this article. I think it was May the 27th, somewhere there, about talking about the therapeutic use exemption Floyd got. Manny Pacquiao didn't get his Tardol injection, but that was because of Nevada State Athletic Commission saying that he ticked, that he was okay. All right? And Thomas Hauser comes up and he's talking, he's trying to insinuate that Floyd somehow has been using PEDs. He cites supposedly, quote unquote, low testosterone levels, or low T to E ratios, that is. Which, when you go and do your research, T E ratios go from 0 0.7 all the way up to 1.3. So Floyd's T E ratios back in the times of Victor Ortiz and, and to the time of, uh, I think it was Robert Guerrero fight, were the same. They fall within the range. And what I would have loved for USADA to do, but they won't do it because they always keep confidentiality, was to just put out the TE ratios and you see that they didn't fluctuate either, which is very important. If your TE ratios fluctuate past 50%, then it means something's wrong. That's a red flag. And we talk about fluctuating, we mean within your samples, within that period of time. Say he was fighting Victor Ortiz and he was sampled 19 times because I think that was how many times he was sampled. Blood and urine then if his T ratios were going up and down, up and down, something's wrong with that. It means he's masking something. And they would just do certain tests to see if there were synthetic compounds in his blood, in his urine, okay? That's all you gotta do. Also, they would look at his biological profile for, since 2010. So all Thomas Hauser's been doing is he's been mentioning a lot of things. Nothing's phony, nothing's strange with them. And then he's, he's sort of couched his questions to certain people in reputable positions so as to get them to coach out certain answers from them because they don't have all the details. And then use them. He tried to use stuff that Kevin Ioli had. And Kevin Ioli was like, no, don't do that. Why isn't Thomas Hauser? Why isn't Dougie Fisher? Why isn't Steve Kim? Why aren't I hearing their voices of outrage that Bo Canelo Alvarez and Miga Kuro agreed to USADA testing instead of VADA testing? Why aren't these guys doing VADA testing? Aren't they under some sort of... Aren't they trying to mask some PDs? Maybe they're going to use IVs before the fight too to rehydrate. If they haven't been doing it all along, maybe boxing is dirty. See, this is the hypocrisy behind these guys. They try to throw dirt because we know it's a political game. We know it's Golden Boy and HBO, and we know how dirty HBO is. We saw the build up to Mayweather Pacquiao and how they were trying to couch Floyd as a woman beater. And they were trying to couch Floyd as someone who was afraid of Manny Pacquiao. Right? They couldn't go the high road. So it's not strange to me. That Thomas Hauser, who's a consultant for HBO, that Dougie Fisher, who's a writer for The Ring Magazine, which has the owner, is the owner of Golden Boy, would side with Hauser, would side with the Undisputed Network. They would side with that side. But they would say nothing at this point in time. Not one thing about Cotto and Canelo Alvarez. They'd be mute right at this point in time. And this is the hypocrisy of boxing, folks. Hypocrisy of the journalists. I think of a couple of journalists who at least they look for facts and they build their stuff off of facts and then they will say what they have to say. Al Bernstein. Al Bernstein's worked with Top Rank, HBO, Showtime, ESPN. And Al Bernstein, for, in my opinion, stays very professional. And he also stays 
pro fighter. He always tries to look from the perspective of the boxers themselves. No matter what network he's with or any comment he has to make, I've noticed Al Bernstein has kept it really classy. No matter what his personal views are, whether some people feel he's this or that or the other, he's kept it professional. He's kept a very high standard. I respect him. I respect Kevin Ioli. Kevin Ioli. I, I respect Lance Pugmire. And Lance Pugmire is not even a cover for boxing. He's just a cover of sports. They will not give Floyd Mayweather the praise and accolades he deserves because he beat these guys. Because no one else in boxing has ever done what he's done. It's very remarkable what he's done. And no one can deny that because the evidence is right there for you to see. And if you watch Floyd Mayweather's fights, the proof is in the pudding. All you have to do is watch. And you'll realize a lot of the stuff that's being circulated about this guy is actually false. Some people say, oh, you're a Floyd Mayweather defender. I don't have to defend Floyd Mayweather. The evidence is right there. I'm just telling you guys the truth about the guy. I don't agree with everything he does. And I usually put it up in my videos. But one thing I'll tell you is, a lie travels very swiftly and quickly. But the truth comes out and is seen. Everybody likes to poke jabs at Floyd Mayweather. And everybody's trying to blacklist him. He has to be the scapegoat for all the ills because he's that good. So you have to put him down because the other thing that people are going to do is just constantly praise him. And they don't want this black fighter who's outspoken to be praised like that. They don't want it. They want everybody to think Jack Dempsey is the great fighter, not Gene Tunney. They want people to believe Harry Crabb was the great fighter, not Gene Tunney, who beat Harry Crabb three out of five times, who beat Jack Dempsey twice. No, not Harry Crabb. They want Ronda Rousey to be the face of the MMA. Not Holly Holmes. See, the pugilists, the scientists, they don't want them to be known in history because they want an icon of everything that they think fighting should be about. It should be animalistic, but not in the sense of self-preservation, in the sense of aggression, pure, unadulterated action. A guy who can walk through punches impervious, like in the movies. That's the kind of guy they want. They don't care about boxing. They care about icons. They don't care about MMA. They don't care about strategy. They care about testosterone. Strong men. Tough guys. Mike Tyson. Rip through everybody. What happens when the tough guy, what happens when the bully meets a guy who's a different kind of beast? A beast who's studied. A beast who's been trained. A beast who acts like the real wild animals act. They don't take unnecessary risk. They look for your weakness. They look for your strengths and they take it away from you. And then they turn it against you. Anybody who has done true martial arts knows the art of war is not to go head on against your opponent. You want the edge. You want a strategy to be able to defeat your opponent without taking too many casualties on your team. In real life, guys don't stand up and just walk to another guy with a gun and keep shooting and then shoot down the other guy. No, they seek cover. In a real fight, in a real war, you seek cover. You must have defense and you must have offense. You guys have a great one.